This video will cover APA formatting. This includes the general page layout, the cover page, and levels or headings in APA style. So here I've opened up a new Word document. Before typing anything, it's a good idea to get the page layout set up correctly so you don't have to worry about it or forget to do it later. APA requires one inch margins all the way around. To set this, go to the Layout tab, and then click on the first option on the left, Margins. Select Normal, which sets up 1 inch margins. If you don't have that option for some reason, you can do this manually by going to Custom Margins at the bottom of the menu. Okay, so the next step is spacing. In APA, as with most formal styles, all documents should be double spaced. To do this, Find the Paragraph drop-down menu and click the small box in the right corner to open the paragraph settings. Now, what we're interested in is under the Spacing section, the third one down. Word is generally set to multiple spacing by default, so we need to change that to double. But that's not all. Notice how there's an after box to the left that says 8PT. Some computers may have a 10PT there as well. Either way, what that's doing is adding extra space after every line break. If you've ever noticed that when you hit enter to start a paragraph that there's extra space between the paragraphs, this is why. And we don't want that. So just make this zero and then click OK. The last layout setting to adjust before you get rolling on the cover page is the font. Word is set to Calibri size 11 by default, but Times New Roman is the preferred font in APA. So find Times New Roman. You can just type the name out in uh, the box if you want to save a few seconds. And the size should be set to 12. Unless you have a good reason not to, 12 point Times New Roman should be the font you use for all formal academic writing in just about every style. So that's it for the formatting section. Now we're ready to put together the cover page. The place to start is with the page number and running head that go in the header. To get into the header, all you have to do is double click at the top of the page. Once you're there, you'll notice that the menu bar now consists of header and footer tools. Before doing anything else, click on the checkbox that says different first page. There are a couple of things with the cover page that often throw students for a loop when they do this for the first time and this is one of them. Whatever you put in the header will show up on every page. But in APA, the header on the cover page is different from the header on the rest of the paper. So clicking that box allows you to put a header on the cover page that won't show up on each of your following pages. Once you've clicked different first page, you're now ready to add in the page number. There's a function built into Word that will automatically number pages for you. You have to use this to number your pages because remember, anything you type in the header shows up on every page. So if you type a one manually, then a one will show up on every page. The page numbering function eliminates that problem. So to insert page numbering function, click on the page number icon, which is the third option from the left. When you click on it, you'll get several options for where to place the page numbers. In APA, you'll put the page number on the top right. So roll your mouse to top of page and then select the third option down, which shows the number on the top right side of the page. When you do that, Word automatically adds the page number to that spot and puts your cursor right next to it so you can start typing. The second part of the header in APA is what's called the running head. This is basically just an abbreviated form of the title of your paper and it will run along the top left corner of each page. On the cover page, you need to include the words running head with a capital R, a space, and then a lowercase h, followed by a colon. Then, in all capital letters, put an abbreviated form of your paper's title. Once the running head is complete, hit tab a couple of times to move the text over to the left side of the header. Once you've completed that, 
make sure that you go back and change the font in the header to 12 point times New Roman. Okay, so the final part of the cover page is the title block, which includes the title of the paper, your name, and the college you're attending. To do this, just double click down on the middle of the page somewhere to get out of that header area. The title block needs to be centered, so select the center option listed in the paragraph section of the home menu. The first line of the title block is the title of the paper. The second line is your name. And the third line is the name of the college you are attending. Once that title box is complete, just move it down to roughly the center of the page. And that's it, you're ready to roll. Well, almost. Starting on the second page, you need to put in another running head, since the cover page is slightly different. In the header at the top of the second page, Repeat exactly what you did on the cover page. The only difference is that instead of typing the words running head, you just put the abbreviated title in all capital letters. Make sure that you go back and change the font in the header to 12 point times New Roman. So if you want to make sure that the heading is right, just go and look at the cover page and make sure that that hasn't changed. And then hit enter several times to move to a third page. If the header just has an abbreviated title and a three on the top right, then you're all good. So there's one last thing you have to do before you start writing your actual content. In the main text area, you need to restate your full title and center it. Once the title's in, hit enter and then remember to move your cursor back to the left, and then start writing. Another quick note. Formal APA format dictates the inclusion of an abstract between the cover page and the first page of content. An abstract is simply a summary of the paper. Um, many instructors do not require an abstract, but if your assignment does call for one, just put a page between the cover page and the beginning of the essay and then include a one paragraph summary of your paper. So here I've inserted some sample text to demonstrate how levels or headings should be formatted. All main headings should be centered, and bolded. Now, for whatever reason, this does not include the title which should be centered, but not bolded. The same is true for the title at the top of your abstract and the references page. To explain what would constitute a main heading, think of an outline. On a formal outline, you have major content areas designated with Roman numerals typically, and underneath each main point are subpoints, and then sometimes subpoints of subpoints. The headings in APA reflect the structure of that sort of a formal outline. So the main points that would be listed with Roman numerals, those would be the headings that are centered and bolded. For average length college papers of let's say three to six pages, that's probably all the headings you will need. But if you are writing a longer research paper, your sub points may also be somewhat long. So a heading would be a good idea there too. Secondary headings for a sub point should be left aligned and bolded. There are several more headings below that even to distinguish subpoints of subpoints of subpoints, but really, unless you're writing a dissertation, you shouldn't worry about anything beyond those first two types of headings. And in fact, for most papers, just one level of headings that are centered and bolded will be fine. That should get you on your way to writing a polished APA paper. If you haven't already, check out the rest of the videos in the APA e-learning series. Brought to you by the Pikes Peak Community College Writing Center. Happy writing!